Hello everyone, uh, my name is Don Rice. I am the board president of the Dykeman Farmhouse uh, Museum Alliance and here we are in the at the Dykeman Farmhouse. We're going to press some cider for our virtual cider press and fall festival this fall. Uh, I'll introduce you to the equipment. We do this every year. Today we're going to do it on camera. Uh, it could actually be cool because we'll get to see a lot of things. You can even slow it down and stop it and say, what did he do? And go back and listen to it again. We have all the raw materials here and we're going to press cider. Uh, the first question that people always ask me is what's the difference between the apple juice at the supermarket and the apple cider that you're making here? And um, since this is what I think. And this is what I think it is. That the apple cider is not filtered. Apple juice is filtered. Apple cider just goes through a very rough bag filled with large holes that just keeps the pulp away. So it has color and apple juice is clear. Sometimes apple juice for, to be stable on the shelf has preservatives in it. Apple cider only lasts, it is a fresh product. It'll last a week, maybe in your fridge, but it's meant to be drunk pretty much when it's made. It's a fresh product. All right, so what do we need? We have raw materials here. Can we see these apples here? Thanks, Melissa. We've got a bag full of apples. That's the important thing. Apple cider is only apples. It's the only ingredient, apples. Can't get better than that. Um, we're gonna need this because we're gonna pulp the apples and it might need a little pushing around, a spatula. This is the press, it's two parts. The first thing that we're gonna do is grind apples up in here. I'll stop and wait for that. Actually, why don't I just put it, maybe I could just put it together and then I really put apples in there when it's time to do it. Uh, why don't I just start to put this all together? This is a cider press, this is the grinder, and this is the press. That's what you need. You, first you have to grind the apples and you press the apples. They're going to go into this bin. You can see that fluid is going to just pass right through everything and into the pitcher down below. Like that. Alright, first we have to press it. I'm going to put in a little bag that makes it easier to toss away the pulp later. There we go, and then we can recycle this. We've used this for a number of years. And then uh, this is the press that actually is going to be the weight that squeezes the juice out of the apples. So first things first. Why don't I move this over to this side, and then I can grab them. All right, so now it's mostly a matter of taking the apples and tossing them in. You can see that there's a jaw with some teeth, some just coarse little teeth. Yeah, it grinds up the apples. And you can see the pulp coming out of the bottom. Take some elbow grease. And so we're going to crush since this is the first one that we're doing today, the first batch of the day, you can see that it needs a little repositioning. Since this is the first batch of the day, we're going to have to crush a few more apples. Now you stop it. And then we'll just... This is a good workout. This apple might be too big. Oh, it went in. Uh oh.
you've got it, you can see the pulp is leaning to one side, so I'm going to even it out. Keep them coming. Inwood was filled with orchards before the city arrived, and the Dykeman family had acres and acres of orchards of apples, cherries, maybe pear trees. There was a cider mill on the Dykeman property just a block away from here at 204th Street in Cooper. It was a building where they did all this, so we're only a block away from where this was actually happening on a bigger scale 200 years ago. So making apple cider is kind of an inward tradition. We'll do another 10 or dozen or so. The teeth are not really sharp, but they're made of metal, so they're a lot harder than the apple. And they just kind of mash it up. You can see that, you know, you might not be able to see now, but you can see that the teeth are flat. They aren't, they aren't sharp, they're flat. Po the points are flat, flat. And that way it just digs a chunk out of the apple, like almost like your teeth would if you were eating one. First one that's too big. Give it a little persuasion. You know, we might be able to press that. So let's just press this apple and then we just pulp up this apple. And then we move to the pressing. The pressing requires that I just reconfigure this a little bit. See, first I'll level it out all the pulp. Isn't that beautiful? That's a great shot, Melissa. These apples came from these apples came from uh, the Boscobel estate of the Hudson, which is where Stott Steichman. Did he actually live there? He built the place, but it was close to when he when he died, and I don't know if he lived to see it um, built. Anyway, Stott Steichman's. Hospital. So now we're going to reconfigure it for the press. First, the press has to go in. It's heavy wooden weight. And now we're going to line it. Back here. And let's put the pitcher underneath it. Great. You can see that there's some gravity fed cider coming out. And now here's an Archimedes screw. We're going to screw it. It takes a while to get it down to the, you can see in the, um, slowly lowering the screw onto the plate. And let's be, apply pressure to the plate, we're going to make some cider really quickly because we'll be able to actually squeeze it with a lot of pressure. Squeeze the pulp. We're almost there. Now I can actually
actually feel a little bit of pressure coming back. And look at, we'll start to see. All the juice from inside the apples. Once it seems like it's pretty much done, then I can release the pressure on the sprue and get ready to do the next batch. But we'll take a look at and see what the dried out pulp looks like. Try to grab this. Press out. Okay, that's that. Now we can actually take a look at the pulp. I'll grab a handful for you. Here, take a look in there. It almost looks like it's been pressed into a cake. Back in the old days, you could feed this to livestock, pigs, chickens, I guess. I really don't know who would eat it. But it is filled with all of the solids of the apple. And you can see it's kind of dry. It has a it feels moist in your hand. It'll take a shape. Maybe I could have squeezed a little more cider out of it. But it is good compost, I think. Spread it on your garden, but I think birds would eat it too. And repeat <laughs> over and over and over until you have all the cider you need and you've gotten through all your apples. Um, so thanks for doing. Oh yeah, it's time to eat. Time to drink some cider. Let's take a look at it. So you can see the cider is cloudy, just like apple cider is every, everywhere in the world because it hasn't been filtered. You we don't even have a cup, do we? Um, but if we had a cup, we'd taste it. Cheers. <laughs> Thanks for joining us today and stay tuned for the apple cider at home recipe that you can make in your apartment.